my dear viewers, beginning today is the official Alliteration Gaming Patreon and channel members. Throughout my Patreon, we've got quite a few tiers you can check out in order to gain special perks and even commission videos that you'd like to see me upload onto the channel. Every tier includes a shout out on my supporter card at the beginning of all of my videos, along with the benefits of the tier itself. Following that, you can now also join the Alliteration Nation by becoming a channel member on the YouTube side of things. Pledging your subscription here as a member of the channel is going to grant you the same shout out on my supporter card as all the Patreon tiers do, as well as access to the members only channel on my Discord. You'll gain a member badge that will level up as you stay subscribed and access to my exclusive emotes when I stream on YouTube. If you're interested in checking out the Patreon, I'm going to have the link in the description and in the pinned comment down below, as well as the link to my Discord should you want to join that as well. And if you want to become a channel member, the big beautiful join button is front and center on my homepage right here. And if you do decide to support the channel in any way whatsoever, know that I am unimaginably grateful and I can't wait to provide you with even more top-notch content at my trademark top speed. Additionally, it's time for the return of the referral code. If you're new here and you're just getting into the game, you've got to make an account on the Universus Gaming Network. When you're signing up, you can use my exclusive referral code alliteration to let Jasco know that I brought you on board, which directly supports me and my work. Having an account on the UGN site is going to allow you to sign up for tournaments, participate in events, locate stores that support the game near you, and much, much more. Playing in events and or mailing in pack wrappers is actually going to accrue loyalty points onto your account, which you'll then be able to redeem for exclusive promo cards in the mail for absolutely free. An account on here is an integral part of playing this game, so make sure you sign up and you use my code alliteration to help me continue doing what I love. I would really, really appreciate the support. You guys absolutely killed it on the last one with all of the signups, and I am really excited to run it back with you all. Now, let's get on to the video. Good evening, my dear viewers, and welcome to another Alliteration Gaming video. My name is Levi, and today's character spotlight is coming your way from Lenoko again. However, given that we're out of Manettas for him to have me show off, he's going to be dedicating this one to his lovely partner, Samantha Main, and having me show off one of her favorite characters to play, and the head honcho of the infamous League of Villains, Tomura Shigaraki. Shigaraki is a six hand size character with 28 health and the death, evil, and fire symbols. Shigaraki is all about a pair of very, very deadly responses. The first of them being that the second that your non-throw attack connects with your rival, they are going to straight up lose 5 health. This terrifying response is Tomura's whole identity and is really going to dictate everything about how we build this character. Upon receiving even the smallest touch from Shigaraki, you're going to be hit with an absolutely terrifying amount of burn damage, one for each finger that touches you. This means the moment you see this guy across from you on the table, there is only one thought running through your head. Do not let him land an attack on you. Do not let him lay a finger on you. This is the exact same feeling that any aspiring or even pro hero feels when they lay eyes on this villainous menace. That is also not the only way we can devastate our rival through making contact with them. Our other response says that we get to force our rival to destroy one of their ready to use resources once we fully block their attack. This does come at the cost of committing Shigaraki, so we're only going to be able to activate it once per turn, but that is more than enough to ward our rival off from attacking us in the early stages of the game. Even when you're attacking into Shigaraki, his touch is going to threaten you as he aims to decay away not only your life, but also your resources. The League of Villains leader is a very, very scary character that can intimidate your rival at any stage of the game through both very careful attacking and defending. With Shigaraki Tomura, you're going to be able to slowly chip away at everything your rival holds dear and turn it all completely to dust, ensuring that they never get a moment's rest when trying to keep your deadly hands off of them. So touching them is the game plan. We've established that. How do we make that happen? Well, when it comes to Shigaraki's attacks, the most important element for you to consider is speed. When you throw an attack as Shigaraki, you'll quickly realize that the printed damage of your attack is rarely very relevant, as the first one to hit them every turn has that hidden 5 extra damage on it thanks to your character. That means we get to prioritize attacks with high speed levels and or high stun counts to help make sure that we can try and get that burn damage 
damage through every turn. Over the course of the game, Shigaraki has picked up a surprising amount of ultra rares that are all very good at enabling his game plan. Decay and Palm Slam and Turn Dust are both going to pressure your rival's board like crazy, forcing them to commit several foundations and maybe even losing some of them in the process. Attacks like these are phenomenal for trying to force an unblockable attack through. Another interesting caveat about Shigaraki's burn damage is that it even goes through on the half block, so Sudden Death Assault is going to be very hard to stop with its enhance alongside anything else that can increase its speed like a Hellflame Stomp. Piercing Needle's 3 damage after using its enhance might not look very threatening, but in Shigaraki, remember, that's actually now a 6 mid for 8 damage. Another fantastic way to take advantage of Shigaraki's threatening response is through cards that really punish your rival for blocking. Powerful effects like Corrosion Lunge's stat spread and Touch of Decay returning to the hand are easily avoided by simply taking them or, in Touch of Decay's sense, half blocking the attack. But that's much more difficult to do when suddenly that damage is increased by 5 from your response. You're going to be able to continue your plan to decay all your rival's resources away with things like Merciless Rush and Full Calling Impact destroying their foundations unless they feel like eating what's probably a third of their life away. Abilities like these really pressure your rival into some tough situations where you're almost guaranteed to get those powerful on-block abilities off for free. Everyone knows Ignited Arrow as the most free 4 damage in the game, but can you afford to actually take 9 instead, or are they going to have to let you activate that ability? These are the tough spots that heroes who try to contest Tomura are going to have to navigate. Now Shigaraki is the main villain around, so it's safe to say that he's got plenty of dirty tricks up his sleeve. On both death and fire, Shigaraki gains access to an attack that still deals 1 damage through a full block. Our response only doesn't work on throw attack meaning moves that have this clause mean our 5 burn damage gets to sneak in there even if our rival completely stops our attack. On top of that, the powerful Villainous Waylay is an amazing tool for Shigaraki that lets you just steal the blocks right out of your rival's hand, really threatening them to hold multiples of each zone to really ensure that they're avoiding our response. Shigaraki also plays quite well with Echo Attacks as they force the rival right then and there to have two of the same block zone unless they want to half block one of them and get touched by our Decay. Wing Nomu is even more threatening because they don't even get to try and half block that one. Just be careful going too overboard on Echoes as they do cost momentum, which is a very scarce resource in a Shigaraki deck. You're probably going to only hit your rival a couple times throughout the game, so make sure you're not overloading your deck with momentum outs. Now, all of that aggression does not mean we can forget our other response. As important as forcing your contact in every turn is, you really want to make sure you're punishing the rival on their turn too. We can do that precisely by doubling up on our troublesome on-block abilities. Destroying a ready foundation with Shigaraki is already extremely troublesome, but it's even harder to play through that when Cheerful Uppercut sticks a card into our card pool or Decaying Grip readies our character right back up to blow up another foundation on the next block. Abilities like these are very debilitating and can easily force your rival to just halt their assault instantly. On top of that, you should be packing as much Breaker as you possibly can inside of your deck so that you can starve your rival of even more resources. Also, pay mind to try and spread it across your zones as much as you can, and in general make sure you have a really really good zone spread across your whole deck, as to destroy a foundation you have to execute a full block. Even this early in his career, Shigaraki has to implement a little bit of strategy in order to come out victorious in this minigame of his. Focusing back to our aggression, let's talk about how our foundations can help output it. Remember how important speed is? Well, we're going to want a ton of it down in our stage as well to help push those attacks through. Whether we're on the fire symbol, the fury package, or both of them, we're going to have access to a ton of spams for bursts of speed. Nervous Habit is also one of the most reliable ways for effortless speed increase, and we can find many other incidental plus one speeds through things like Quick to Act and Snack Time. Glamorous can also provide us with a big burst of speed if our rival is interacting with our moves a little too hardcore. Our foundations are also going to play a really big role in keeping us alive and our defensive response popping off. Shigaraki is a character that needs to full block an attack to find his max value every turn, but does not help himself block at 
all via his character. So while some foundations give speed, we also want plenty that take it away. Cards like Heroic Lineage, Graceful Maneuvers, and Nothing to See Here can all provide some big speed reductions that can ensure we get to play some really efficient defense. Shigaraki might seem aggressive, but he's a lot more mid-range than you really think, so you want to make sure you can put your dukes up and block as efficiently as you can attack, just to ensure that you're getting to decay on both players' turns. With that in mind, cards like Mastermind's Apprentice and Company can both increase and decrease speed. That's exactly what our deck wants. Defensive tricks like convenient timing, hacking their checks, or self-assured manipulating their zones to ensure that we always get that full block off are also very powerful abilities that you can enable to just slow down your rival even more. Now with how important slowing down your rival is, it's just as crucial to turn up the heat on Shigaraki's control elements as well. Our response is already going to bring some immense pressure to their board, but we can further that process by including cards like League Invitation and Apathetic that just let us point at anything inside our rival stage and take it out of the equation entirely. Cards like these are so important for keeping the rival's powerful speed reduction down to ensure that we can force our move through their defense and activate Decay. The death symbol is what really excels at destroying your rival's resources, so you're going to see even more incidental destruction on it as well through cards like All Smiles. Now when it comes to assets, we can further our control even more through cards like Coda, bringing in some of the evil symbol's signature check hacking mechanics just to make our rival playing cards a miserable experience. Or we can bring in something like the League of Villains to constantly cancel their best defensive or aggressive abilities that can mitigate our game plan of touching them every cycle. Now action wise, boy does Shigaraki have some great options here. On the death and evil symbols, showdown is one of the strongest things that Shigaraki gets to do. Being able to fully block an attack, force them to destroy a ready foundation, and then commit two of their others is such a massive play that both tells them their turn is over and they have to go back into your turn with three fewer ready resources than they planned on having, leaving them wide open to a decaying strike. On the other side of things, the fire symbol is always known for some of the best actions around, so if we build on that path, we're going to be given even more options to both provide big speed pumps that we so desperately want in our Shigaraki deck, and control our rival's resources even more, sometimes all on the same cards. That's going to conclude our showcase today on Shigaraki. Thanks again to Lenoko for commissioning this video for Samantha, and if you enjoyed and or learned anything from it, I would really appreciate some feedback down below. And if you want your own video just like this, you can check out the Character Spotlight tier in my Patreon link down below, or any of my video commission tiers really, so you can have some impact on the type of content I make and submit yourself as a part of the channel. If you want to support even further, you can also hit the join button and become a channel member. With all that being said though, I appreciate you just making it to the end of this video. That's all the time I've got for today, but I hope I can see you in the next one.